Sometimes when you're reviewing games, you can really feel like a speedrunner, trying to blast your way through an experience as quickly as possible, and that doesn't necessarily lend itself to a game like Deadcraft. Full disclaimer, this review is based on the first 22 hours of the game. I've unlocked everything in the crafting menu, but I haven't beaten the final boss. Deadcraft is developed by Marvelous, and takes many of the ideas from their Story of Seasons franchise and combines it with some action RPG elements. But are there enough unique ideas to keep the apocalypse interesting, or is this one Zed on arrival? Well, a thanks to the developer for the review copy, and now, let's find out. In Deadcraft, you play as half-zombie Reed, the anti-hero whose adventure begins with his less-than-graceful exit from the Ark. For reasons unknown to the player, he wants to take down Nebron, a mysterious, maniacal dictator who rules over the Ark and its peoples from the comfort of the Sanctuary. The side cast of characters could come straight from a Borderlands game with Vernon, zombie Gramps, the slightly psychotic Jesse, oh, and lest we forget, Duna. I can't believe it! Our meeting must be fate! They're a colourful bunch and reasonably well written, and the mainline story is quite clear. The same can't be said for side quests. These are generic to a fault and will involve retrieving an item, killing a group of people, or crafting something new. <laughs> When it comes to gameplay and controls then, it's a real hybrid experience and as such, I'll split the review up into key areas. These are survival, exploration and adventure, and combat. I'll also put some timestamps as well. Deadcraft isn't what I'd class as a full survival experience. You'll find a hunger and thirst gauge, which can be restored through the consumption of items you've either grown, purchased or scavenged. If they drop to zero, then you'll begin to lose health. And as you'd expect, when your health reaches zero, you die. Now, a typical survival game will include some form of punishment, here you'll simply restart at the beginning of that day. Yes, you might have lost an item or two, but it's incredibly forgiving, perhaps too forgiving. Another aspect to survival is the scavenging of items in the world. Certain areas flash up, and it's through the destruction of these that you can gain the collectible items that you'll use in much of the farming and other crafting areas. Struggling to gather the correct items becomes one of the biggest roadblocks when it comes to progression. This can cause frustration, and it's only exacerbated by the random nature with which items drop. And while you can purchase certain key ingredients in shops, they'll only stock a maximum of 10, and then they'll be sold out for a few days. When your character's fully fed and watered, they'll eventually want to hit the hay, and your life gauge will be determined by how full up you were and how much thirst you had when you went to sleep. It's a nice idea in principle, but you have to sleep so often, you'll develop a ritual of stuff in your face, drinking everything, and then sleeping, and in a game where time seems to be the currency, it's an expensive one. All of the farming takes place in this first area, which can be expanded. Every time you build something, there are cutscenes to boot, but these thankfully can be switched off, although the menu text isn't actually reflective of that and instead refers to cutscene dialogue, slightly unusual. Your crafting progression is limited in two areas. One, through your own acquisition of SP, skill points, gained from almost everything you do in the world, and two, via your progress through the main story. Now, every unlock in Deadcraft is split into either a human or zombie category. These are denoted with either the yellow or purple colour. So, when you go to plant in your fields, you may water these with regular water, or perhaps you'll want to use zombie blood. And in perhaps the best system in the game, you can actually grow your own zombie minions. These are known as Frankies, and I'll return to these in the combat section because they are intrinsically linked. The farming's quite standard if you've played any of the Story of Seasons or other farming games, just with the twist of the zombie or human craftable items. The biggest issue for me as a player was no ability to pin a recipe. You'll be constantly asked to create something for a quest line and have to take a screenshot or memorize the recipes. In a game where that forms a good 40% of your experience, at best it's monotonous and at worst becomes a real frustration. And Marvelous don't really help with this, with the inclusion at around about the 15 hour mark of certain machines which have time limits attached to them. So you have to go and sleep for a couple of days before what you want is created. Farming for me is one of the weakest of the areas in the game, which thankfully is offset to some degree by a reasonably robust combat system. As Reed is a human-zombie hybrid, he has access to a number of special abilities. His zombie power gauge is actually shown up here, and each zombie ability you use, that will gradually turn you more human, but through eating certain items you can bring this back, or through some of your skills. One in particular sees you hoisting an enemy above your head and literally consuming them. And Reed's human side has access to two primary weapons. You can quick switch these, and they range from classic zombie killers, the knife, a spinning blade, onto pistols, shotguns and rifles. 
In a game filled with so much combat, I was very pleased that weapons don't degrade, with the guns using a twin stick approach, but the melee opting for a lock-on mechanic, which was a touch hit and miss. If you do enough damage to some enemies, they may drop to their knees, from here you can either finish them or attempt to shake them down. This allows you to steal a couple of their possessions before they run off screaming. And that's where we get onto the wanted system. Now as with games like Grand Theft Auto, if you decide to shake down local citizens or accidentally relieve someone of their life, then you're going to get a wanted level going up to four stars. At one star, not everyone will chase you, but anything higher and the local populace will turn hostile. After a few days back home sleeping, this wanted gauge will gradually disappear. And it's another system where I had a real problem. Problem, and that's linked to the Frankies, so let's talk about those. <laughs> With any enemy that you kill in the game, you can harvest their corpse. If it's a full corpse, then great. If it's in pieces, or well, then you can use a machine to put them back together. Then, as I'm sure you're anticipating, you plant them in your garden and water them with zombie blood for a few days and out sprouts a Frankie in possibly my favorite mechanic in the entire game. Whichever troop you killed, the Frankie will gain their abilities. While you can't name them, which would have been a really nice touch, you can actually trade these online. Through a vendor, you can see other people's Frankies and purchase them using experience points and you can even set your little Frankie free to go and help others out. Alongside the Frankies, you'll be crafting turrets, defenses and other placeable items which are massively underutilized but using up to four frankies in combat really is enjoyable that is until they accidentally trigger a wanted level whenever you try and use them in a town running around's fine but if they fight an enemy in town invariably for some unbeknownst reason to me it triggers a wanted level and if you remember that currency i spoke about right at the beginning time. It costs you so much time. You run back to base, you sleep for a few days, you wait five to ten minutes in real time and then once again you can carry on with your quest. It's a shame because at its best the combat for me is a real high point, particularly when you unlock all your Z abilities and it has a few interesting boss fights. The controls are also a bit of a mixed bag. The lock on mechanic I've spoken about, but the shooting sporadically seems to want to lock on automatically and this can't be switched off, but they're okay for the most part. For the first five hours gameplay felt really fresh, but the respect for player's time seems to diminish as the experience extends. And extends is an intentional word because having to return home to sleep for absolutely no reason, only to return the next day to be able to continue my quest isn't at all fun, and it's only there to extend the experience. And while there are some nice ideas, nothing's ever fully realised. I give gameplay 12 out of 20, and controls also score 12 out of 20. As a big fan of a post-apocalyptic adventures, aesthetically speaking you could certainly liken Deadcraft to one of my favourites, Borderlands. It has an interesting, almost cell shaded style, with the action taking place from that top-down isometric camera. This can be fully rotated, and I certainly wished they'd let you zoom in a little. One issue I have with the camera is how it's not tied to the map. As you rotate the camera, this obviously changes your orientation, and in many games this will change the orientation on the map so that you always know which way's up and which way's down. At least having this as optional would have been nice, as even once I'd explored every area, there were still times when I needed to bring up the main map just to get my bearings. Performance wise, we're looking at 30 frames per second and perhaps a dynamic resolution, although it looks to me to at least be 720p. As far as visual quality goes, it's actually quite good. It suffers from the usual array of Unreal 4 engine related problems on Switch, less than ideal frame pacing, a few stutters when sprinting around in larger areas, and the old classic, which isn't exclusive to the Switch, but textures sometimes stream in over a few seconds. The visual combat effects are actually nice, with the dismembered bodies of your victims littering the ground. And I enjoyed the gruesome cutscenes that accompany some of your actions when farming. You go on and on about how strong you were. The audio's okay, the voice acting's serviceable, some of the musical loops didn't quite match what was happening on screen, but the sound effects are also decent. In handheld, I didn't experience any issues with text size, there have been no crashes, and load times are very reasonable. I give visuals and performance 15 out of 20, and the audio also scores 15 out of 20. Deadcraft is priced appropriately. It will set you back £19.99 or your regional equivalent for the base game, and you're looking at around about a 30 hour long adventure. If you're able to take it slowly, there's some enjoyment to be had here, but repetition is an issue. Interestingly, the Deluxe Edition includes some significant DLC packs. The most interesting of these to me is Jesse's Wasteland Wares, which essentially allows you to open up a shop for selling the parts. And then there's It Came From A Junkyard, an entirely new narrative story which takes place following the events of this game. 
and as of the time of writing I believe you can pick up the deluxe edition for around about £26. Value for me though is diminished by one too many delaying tactics and it scores 15 out of 20. Deadcraft has a lot of ideas. Some of them are good and some of them are bad. However, they overlook some sensible inclusions, such as a recipe pinning system and two costly ingredients for some items. There is still some fun to be had here, but I am a little disappointed. It gets a switch up score of 69%. Do let us know what you think down in the comments. Maybe you've been playing this for a day or so and perhaps you totally disagree. Either way, thanks for watching and to anyone that subscribes and enjoys the content, we really appreciate you. For all things Switch, all the time, and a big thanks to our Patreons, you guys are amazing. All the links to that are in the description. Keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!